Hello YouTubers and welcome back to the Scientist Raz channel. Now as promised in the last video, in this video we're going to work on moving the models we made from the virtual world into the physical world with the help of this milling machine. This is a central machinery mini vertical milling drilling machine from Harbor Freight. Uh, this has been modified with uh, motors and sprockets and chains so that it could be computer controlled. Uh, this, is, this machine is sold under a number of different brands and so uh, basically on YouTube they call this an X2 machine. So here's my uh, X2 CNC and now what we're going to do is going to start cutting some metal. Okay so let's uh, load the models into it and then let's get to milling these uh, models out to turn them into parts. Now the CNC modification that I made uh, to this milling machine, uh, I tried to make it as simple as possible and for easy and it for it to be as easy to implement for me as possible. So that's why I use these stepper motors and I use sprockets and chains because it was just very easy for me to implement and uh, it works out very well. I do have a uh, proof here, something that I made. So we can take a good look at that and see how well this machine can make parts. Okay, here we have something that I made on this X2 milling machine. In the industry that I came from, this would be called a proof, which demonstrates the capabilities of the, of the machine. And you see here, has a has a mirror finish on it. Also, it's engraved. Has a cutout for a bearing. It's not irregular or eccentric. It's tight in there, but not too tight. It's, it's, it can be pushed with a finger. Yeah, it's not going to fall out. It's perfect. Perfect size hole for what I'm doing. Okay, let's take a look at my idea of an implementation of a CNC conversion of this X2 milling machine. Now this is a uh, unique configuration that I hadn't seen before. I came up with this configuration. And that is a chain drive. It uses sprockets and number 25 chain in order to do the conversion. It was very simple to do. And I didn't have to do very much uh, work on the uh, milling machine at all. For example, here's the Y drive on it. I took this hand wheel hand wheel off. I put this 40 tooth number 25 pitch sprocket on the back of it. The sprocket, I, I cut the collar off the sprocket so it would be flat so we have space to put this hand wheel back on. And then just put the hand wheel back on. The sprocket is keyed and, and there's a, actually a bit of a friction fit. It could be pinned if necessary but it's not necessary. It doesn't slip, it's not going to slip. Comes over here to our, this is a, a, a weak NEMA 23 stepper motor. But because we have so much uh, gear reduction here, the torque doesn't matter at all. This bracket is simplicity in itself, the stepper motor mounting bracket. There's well, nothing to it. It's just a piece of uh, L channel. Comes across here, I think, using ex some existing holes that they had. I'm not sure what they were un under that dust cover there. This comes across. And the motor is mounted on it. And that operates fine. Let's see, what is this Y? You see the motor, the motor doesn't move. 
anything like that. That's the backlash compensation. Goes uh, fast enough. I mean, you have to be pretty energetic to turn turn that by hand that fast. So that's the Y. Let's take a look at the X. Here's my X implementation. Same thing. A 25 pitch sprocket. Number 25 pitch chain. Took the hand wheel off. Put that sprocket on there. Hit the mill the collar off of that sprocket. So it's basically flat, but it's key. And it's a friction fit that which is provided by this nut on on the back of this hand wheel. You tighten that down as much as you want. Then that goes over here to our stepper motor, which is just mounted on a flat plate. No big deal, just drill the big hole, put the motor in, as long as it's on the same plane and it's held securely. And that's not going to move. Let's see what it said. Uh, X. And I think it's that's adequate speed. certainly faster than you could do by hand for an extended period of time and this is the z-axis they already had a shaft on there so what I did is I got this I don't know how many teeth that is 72 teeth number 25 pitch roller chain sprocket made by Spacely I'm sorry Martin Sprockets. And this. This still has a collar on it. And it's got a, a, a set screw in there. Comes down. And here's how our uh, stepper motor is mounted. Little plate I made. It's just a U. There it is. Very simple. Okay, I, I did implement limit switches on this. Uh, if I had to do it again, I, would, I wouldn't put them where they are. But in this case, this one is here. It's on the end of this x-axis. There's the y-axis. Let me switch. Sitting on the base of this. Just cover it with tape. And here's the z-axis. No, oh, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's home this machine.
click this auto to zero. Okay, let's get our zero. Okay, let's get to cutting. Okay, our part is out, out of the milling machine, out of the virtual world, into the real world. And uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, this looks pretty good. <laughs> A lot of holes in it. Got the uh, NEMA 17 stepper motor hole. It's got these holes here for these linear bearings. The holes back here for the mounting bracket. Okay. Good job, X2. Okay, so it looks like we can successfully move these parts from the virtual world to the real world. So what I'm gonna do now is start cutting out the rest of the components. And once we have all the components cut out, then we could start assembling the pick and place machine from those components. So thanks for watching and look towards the next video where I start assembling the pick and place machine. Thanks for watching and remember to see my other YouTube channel, Disco Raz, for some great live entertainment. Bye.